Getting to the major leagues is a grind, but being able to stay is even tougher. For most players who do make it, it's a struggle to stay, especially for pitchers. After a couple bad outings, they'll just replace you with another young arm eager to make an impact. For the Detroit Tigers in 1976, one of those eager young arms was Mark Fidrich, a tall, lanky kid from Massachusetts with a bushel of blonde hair that flowed right out of his baseball cap. Fidrich would make his first career start in May of 76 and soon take the entire world by storm. He would lead the league in ERA, ERA+, and complete games while finishing runner-up in the Cy Young voting and running away with the Rookie of the Year. The Tigers looked like they had a future ace to build around in Fidrich, and a very marketable one at that. But he disappeared just as quickly as he burst onto the scene and was out of baseball by the time he was 28. This is the story of Mark Fidrich, baseball's biggest one-year wonder. The 1976 Major League Baseball season was filled with a lot of notable storylines. The Chicago White Sox became the first and last team in Major League Baseball history to wear shorts during a game. Hank Aaron hit the final home run of his career as a Milwaukee Brewer. A 50-year-old Minnie Manusa came out of his 12-year retirement to play three games for the White Sox. Frank Robinson took the final at-bat of his career, and an Italian third base coach named Tommy Lasorda would be named the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers. But the most notable and memorable achievement was the season Mark Fidrich had for the lowly Detroit Tigers, and it was the Summer of the Bird. The Detroit Tigers originally took Fidrich with their 10th round selection in the 1974 draft out of his high school in Massachusetts, much to the confusion of Fidrich himself. When he received the phone call telling him that he'd been drafted, his initial reaction was that he was drafted into the military, not to the major leagues. Upon entering camp, Fidrich was met with even more confusion. He was unsure as to what position he should work out with, given that he had been a jack of all trades in high school. What's wrong, man? I said, you said pitch is over there, I pitch. You said infield is over there, I play shortstop. You said catch is over there, I don't go there because I've only caught once. And outfielders are over there and I, and I play the outfield if I don't pitch. And I play, you know, I play other positions. He goes, oh God, what do we got here? He goes, what they sign up as? I said, where's, where's your contract sign on the bottom line? It said pitcher, but my scout told me to tell you that I play other positions because when he signed me, he saw me play in left field. He didn't see, he saw me come in and throw to one batter. That was it, the scout saw me throw to one batter. And, you know, he even told me, he goes, you're a pitcher. Get over there, will you? <laughs> forget infield, forget outfield. You no longer do that anymore. This is a different kind of baseball. It's a pitcher and that's it. So that's when I became a full-fledged pitcher. Soon after Fidrich was deemed a pitcher by the Tigers staff, the coaches would also tell him something that would define his career, that he resembled Big Bird from Sesame Street. Thus, the nickname of the Bird stuck with him throughout the entirety of his career. Fidrich, known as a character, they call him the Big Bird because they think he resembles the uh, fellow on Sesame Street. And uh, this is an honor of Big Bird Fidrich. After a pair of impressive seasons in the minor leagues, Fidrich made the big club in 1976 and began his career in the bullpen. On May 15th, Fidrich, who had only thrown one career inning, was given the ball to make his first career start against the Cleveland Indians. After starting with six hitless innings, Fidrich walked away with his first career victory. Aside from his great pitching, Fidrich attracted attention by his unconventional mannerisms, which included patting down the mound before each half inning, talking to the baseball and telling it where to go, strutting around the mound after every batter, throwing baseballs with hits in them out of play and requesting new ones, and positioning his defense based on how he was going to pitch a hitter. The Indians had never seen anything like it before and believed Fidrich was trying to hypnotize them, when in reality, he just wanted to get the mound the way he liked it. People thought I was strange. I didn't think anything of it until people started saying, hey, you know what you're doing out there? Ah, pitching. Oh, before you pitch. I mean, yeah, filling up the hole. I don't like it. You want me to get the ground crew out here every time? I mean, you know, stop the game, ground crew, you know, fix the mound, you know? I mean, because eventually then I wear into my own hole. You know what I'm saying? And it was a thing of, why go into someone else's hole? That's the way he pitches. Pitch the way you pitch, and if he wants to go in your hole, let him, you know? So yeah, I just always filled it up. I mean, that's... It, it was weird. People thought, you know, and, and I never, I was not conscious of it. You know, I just did it naturally, and, and people thought it was weird. I mean, writers, that's what made writers start going, you know, oh, we got someone different here. They said I was talking the ball. Here I am, I'm on the mound going, okay, I got a guy on first base now. I got this guy coming up. I'm talking to myself. It was like getting some nerves off you going, God, I'm in trouble again. How am I going to get out of this? Okay, calm down, relax. And that's just what I do. Regardless, his antics on the mound worked for him, and it began a string of impressive starts from the 21-year-old.
Fidrich is on a roll, but despite owning a 7-1 record with a 2.18 ERA, most people outside of Detroit didn't know who he was. The Tigers were a last place team, and games were not nationally televised or publicized like they are today. If Fidrich had a good start, the only way somebody outside of Detroit would know was if they read it in the paper. But on June 28, 1976, the eventual American League champion New York Yankees were in town for a Monday night baseball game televised on ABC, and the world was finally about to get introduced to the bird. Fidrich lived up to the hype, tossing a complete game while only allowing one run, and picking up his eighth win of the season. He had the Yankees so rattled that at one point, third baseman Greg Nettle stepped out of the box, yelled at his bat similarly to the way Fidrich yells at the baseball, and told it to hit the ball over the fence. When he failed to do so, he jokingly said that his bat is Japanese and doesn't understand English. The Yankee game put Fidrich on the map. He would throw two more complete games, allowing only one run and lowering his ERA to 178 before being named the starting pitcher for the American League All-Star team, becoming only the second rookie pitcher ever to start the Midsummer Classic. I'm Mark Fidrich, I live in Northrop, Massachusetts, and I'm a pitcher for the All-Star game. <laughs> Is that good? After allowing a pair of runs in his two innings pitch in the All-Star game, Fidrich continued to roll on the bump for the Tigers. The most astonishing thing about Fidrich was the size of the crowds he was drawing to Tiger Stadium on the days that he pitched. In 1976, the Detroit Tigers welcomed 1,467,020 fans into Tiger Stadium. 605,677 of those, or 41%, came in games when the bird was on the bump. Fidrich slightly slowed down at the end of the 1976 season, but still put up very impressive numbers, and the baseball writers took notice. He took home the Rookie of the Year award with ease, and came in second in the Cy Young voting, falling to a well-deserved Jim Palmer while also finishing 11th in the MVP award voting. Safe to say, the future looked bright for Fidrich. While preparing for the 1977 season, Fidrich injured his knee, which would keep him out until the end of May. After a couple of solid starts, Fidrich felt his arm just go dead. This would be a torn rotator cuff that would not be diagnosed or repaired until 1985, eight years after his initial injury. Despite his arm and rotator cuff literally being torn, he would pitch two more games after his injury before going on the disabled list for the rest of the 1977 season. He would attempt to rehab and come back, but would only toss 81 more big league innings after the 77 season, and was released by the Tigers after 1981. He would sign a contract with his hometown Red Sox, but after just two disappointing seasons in the minors, the bird was out of baseball almost as quickly as he arrived. After baseball, Fidrich moved back to Massachusetts and bought a farm for him and his family. He was known to go down to the Little League field in his hometown of Northborough and teach Little League kids how to pitch and play the game of baseball. In addition to running his farm, he also had a dump truck he used to transport gravel and asphalt locally. While working and repairing on the truck one day in 2009, Fidrich fell beneath it and was crushed. He was 54. Mark Fidrich will always be remembered as one of the greatest characters the game of baseball has ever seen, and there won't be anyone like him for a long time. While his career was short-lived, his impact on the game and the city of Detroit will live on forever.